Hi, thanks for having me at Petrol Head Rehab. My name's Chris, I'm 34 years old, and I've very recently come to terms with my addiction. I like electric bikes. I'm sorry. So there we have it, the Harley Davidson Livewire is a good bike. It's worth your attention. Now, I feel like there's two ways to talk about this test. There is testing this Livewire as a motorcycle, as we all know and love them. And then there's the electric -y bit and how that works and what the advantages and limitations of that are. So let's chop straight to, it's a motorbike. It's got two wheels and a throttle. We all know what we're doing with them, or at least we pretend to. So what is it like? What is the Livewire like? as a motorcycle. Fast is the first impression. It's 105 horsepower, that's what Harley claims. Um, I've seen some dyno printouts from these off of a Dynajet dyno, putting it at 98.6 at the wheel, which is, yeah, let's call it 100 brake. That's a lot of power. It does weigh 250-ish kilos, so it's not a light bike, but the minute you ride it, as soon as you get onto an open road, it feels quick. Every time you open the throttle hard, it goes. It's got a real sense of urgency, a sense of poke about it that feels good by any motorcycle standards, but to come out of the Harley Davidson factory, it's a little bit of a curveball. You know, Harleys go and a big lazy cruisery things. That's the rules, right? Not this one. It's got some serious shove. So the motor is powerful. Any speed below 60, 70 mile an hour, it has got all the get up and go I've ever needed on a road bike. Just clarify that. Passing cars, overtaking traffic, you can just fire past in an instant. Hard driving out of your favorite tight corner, it's got all you want. There's definitely been no disappointment in the dynamics for me riding this thing as a road bike. Now, I don't want to dive into all the electrical bits, we'll save that later, but definitely in terms of performance, the Harley Davidson Livewire is a hit with me. So what about the rest of the bike? Again, very un-Harley for me. When you look at the bike itself, it's got kind of show a big piston forks, a show a twin tube rear shock, it's got 17 inch wheels, a 180 section rear tire, upside down forks, Brembo brakes. It's the sort of spec list you read off of a, a sports bike, a super bike, not, not a Harley. It really is a big change from what you expect from that manufacturer. The riding position too, you sit up on top of it, there's no silly feet forward pegs, pegs underneath you, and it's quite a stretch forward to the bar. It puts me in mind of sort of muscle bikes like V-Maxes, Diavels, the FTR from Indian, that sort of bike, that sort of quite aggressive hunched forward pose. The chassis itself is interesting. There's something about it that works differently to motorcycles with a petrol engine. There's a lot to do with the inertia, the rotational mass, the centrifugal forces within a conventional petrol engine that A, this bike doesn't have, there's far fewer rotating parts, and B, the rotating bits it does have are really low down and they're definitely not in the normal position for a conventional petrol bike. That combined with the fact that you're not ever changing gear, you're just rolling on and off the throttle, means the handling is easy. It's super easy but there's always something that just doesn't feel quite normal. It took me a good few hundred miles to get my head around rolling it into corners and steering it but it works and it works well. 250 kilos and the geometry and setup of this bike, it is absolutely not a Grand Prix bike. It's not something that just drops onto the side of the tire and carves the tightest line around the corner. It is more, as I said before, that kind of muscle bike, street bike. It's got a real nice flowy riding style to it. I rode cross Wales, did a whole tank of battery, tank of battery fuel, just on sweeping A and B roads, and it was an absolute joy. When you're just trying to carry a good bit of pace, cross country, passing cars, sweeping in what would be second and third gear and fourth gear bends, that sort of flowy riding, I absolutely love the chassis on it. Really effortless, really nice, very, very stable on the bumps. When you step it up to that next level of riding, when you go from cruisy B road, A road blast to a bit more thrashy, a bit more pinning the throttle out the corners, braking hard, pitching it on its side, then the weight starts to come back and the, the geometry and the setup of the chassis starts to show through. It's not designed to be a razor sharp corner machine. It's a, 
a beautiful flowy cruisy bike. So when you start riding it like that, you know, it does take a lot more effort to turn side to side than something like an R6 or a CBR 600. And its weight starts to show you start getting a bit of movement, a bit of wobble, a bit of protest from the, the machine itself. That would be the same whether this was electric or petrol. Bikes in this category don't corner like super sport bikes. That's how they're so smooth and stable and enjoyable on a cruisy ride. But I'm just trying to put you in mind of where to expect it. And this comes back again to the engine because engine, motor, power, power delivery. The motor can be an absolute pussycat. You can cruise along with what would be the equivalent of the smoothest fueling you've felt on any motorcycle. There's very little shunt in the drivetrain. Rolling on, rolling off is effortless and smooth. And you can cruise along at that speed. But if you crack the throttle hard, the thing absolutely rips. And I kept finding myself going out for a cruisy ride and then getting suckered into putting it in the most aggressive mode I could find and nailing the throttle out of every corner and breaking into it. And then the chassis sort of goes, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not designed for that. And so you almost end up, it's like having a super sport motor in a cruiser bike, but you can also roll off the gas and the super sport motor is really calm, if that makes sense. It, the motor really does seem to do fast and aggressive as well as it does smooth and cruisy. The chassis likes smooth and flowy. The chassis doesn't love being hammered as hard as you can. Are you confused? I'm confused. It's one of those bikes that most of the time when I jump on a motorcycle, within 100 miles, 150 miles, I've got a pretty good idea of what it's about, what the chassis is gonna do, what the motor's gonna do. And then the more I ride, the more I kind of confirm that and find a few extra little bits, but generally within that first couple of tanks of fuel, I've got a pretty good feeling of what a bike's about. This took me a lot longer because everything about it, while it feels like a motorcycle, it's easy to ride. Everything about it is just slightly different. When you want to go for a long ride, you don't look at the straight route there. You look for where the electric charging points are and you pick your route via them and you stop and have a coffee. When you go out for a blast on a Sunday morning, you bring it back and you put it in your garage. And then the next morning, it's fully charged and ready to go again. The way the drive comes in means you can really come hard off an apex, but it took me a long time to work out how to find the limit of traction, how to feel for the grip on the rear tire, because I've spent years listening to engines and feeling engines through my bum. And this is different. And it took me a real while to just get my head around that stuff and suss it out. It's fascinating. I kind of set myself a promise that I would ride it until the novelty wore off and see if I still liked it. I've done more miles on this than I've done on any other test bike this year. And the novelty hasn't worn off yet, I have to admit. I'm still excited by, purely by the fact that it's electric and it's different and everything feels new and exciting about it. But maybe that's a good thing. Maybe the novelty has worn off and it is just a brilliant bike. It's gonna be hard to say that and time will tell. And if there's one thing I've found out riding this bike is it absolutely splits opinions. There are people who see it, love it, can't get enough of it, wanna know where to buy one, and just think it's the best thing ever. And then there are people who actually write it off before they've even been near it. They go, it's electric, don't like it. Tarly, don't like it. The range is rubbish, I don't like it. And, and don't even give it a chance, which I think is unfair. Go and ride one, go and try one, then write it off if you don't like it. But genuinely, it's a good bike. So one of the big questions you always get whenever you park up on this anywhere is, ah, oh, yeah, but don't you miss the sound? Don't you miss the noise? Yeah. I, I, I kind of see where that's coming from. And I'm a guy who likes motorbike noises. I'm, I like making motorbike noises and I like listening to them. And as much as I love a V4 Ducati on full song, I miss two strokes. I miss the sound of a two cylinder RGV 250 screaming up through the revs. We can still listen to those sounds. And actually, in all honesty, I didn't miss the sound of a petrol engine when I was riding it. It does make a noise. That's a thing people always think they're silent. They do make a noise. And actually, when you ride this hard, when you gas it hard out of a turn or pull away hard, it has this sort of evil whiny noise that, I don't know, it sounds kind of just as exciting as a petrol engine. It's different. It's hard to describe it, but I didn't ride around going, oh, I missed the noise. I rode around going, that makes quite a cool sound when you ride it flat out. So it still makes a sound. I like the sound. You might not, but it's not something I missed when I was riding it, which is definitely something I thought I would. Now, we have to talk about the electric thing. It, you, I am a pe look, my hands are covered in grease and oil. I am a petrol head. I grew up with petrol bikes, rebuilding petrol engines as a kid. When I was supposed to be testing this this morning, Alec Bike World distracted me with some 1950s mopeds that needed the engine sorting on. I'm, I am a man who loves the smell of petrol. I am obsessed with engines. I've, I've just got a fascination with them. 
I am the sort of person who should hate this. I'm the sort of person who shouldn't have any interest in this at all. Yet, it's got under my skin. I've, I've found myself looking for excuses to ride it. I told Harley they had to leave it with us for another week because I kind of just wanted to do some more miles on it. There are limitations. So range, I've typically got about 100 miles out of it. That's, that's the sort of average range I've found. When I've gone out and put luggage on the back, played my Bluetooth phone through the music on the music on the Bluetooth on the thingy majiggy the the dash connect the dash connects to your phone blue that one done that use the sat nav through the dash on the Bluetooth magic phone thingy done that headlights nighttime all the worst case stuff and then ridden it like an idiot I've got it down to 70 miles 67 I think was the lowest amount of miles I managed to do on a full charge but most of the time I'm getting 100 miles riding how I want to ride is that enough no, not if you want to ride to the other end of the country. It's nowhere near enough. I've done a few big trips on it, biggish trips on it, because I wanted to see how that worked. As I mentioned already, you've got to pick your route based on where the chargers are. Now this Harley will charge in one hour on one of the DC fast charge stations, or you get 80% charge in 40 minutes. So I always try and pick my routes when I've taken it a long way via fast chargers. That means you can ride somewhere, pick a nice place to stop, plug it in, have a cup of tea, have a sandwich, have a little chill out, get enough charge to continue your journey, unplug it, pay you three pound or whatever it is for a tank of gas on one of these, and then carry on riding to wherever you wanna go. It needs a bit of planning. You need to give yourself 45 minutes to an hour to stop. There are some catches. If you get to your fast charger and someone's already on it, you've gotta wait. If you get to the fast charger and as one I found, the contactless pay wasn't working, so, couldn't use it, had to ride to another one. So it's not perfect, the system isn't flawless, but I was pleasantly surprised riding across rural Wales at the number of proper fast charge points there were. So I think the infrastructure is it's better than I thought for sure. There are still some questions for me. How long does that battery last in terms of its life cycle? Obviously we know most motorcycle engines are good for 100,000 miles, really. Is that battery gonna be good for that? Is that motor gonna be good for that? I don't know, I don't know the answer. Obviously Harley tell us it's the best battery and motor in the world and it will last forever. <laughs> That's their job. The other question is kind of the elephant in the room. You have to ask it. The price. It's £28,000. Now, I think you have to respect the fact that all that, all that's, all that's new. The suspensions, we've, we've got that already and we've got wheels already, but that powertrain, that motor, that battery, the controller, the charging system, everything that goes with it, that's new. It doesn't really exist properly yet. You know, Harley are making this stuff up. They've developed these systems. You know, the technology is very much still in its infancy when you compare it to the internal combustion engine. Does that justify 28 grand? Depends if you want one, I guess. At 28 grand, people who buy these are people who want them, if that makes sense. If you can afford a 28 grand Harley, you can afford to not have it as your only bike. You don't need to ride it to work every day. You probably don't need to ride it to get to the other side of the country. It's a, a toy, a plaything. So maybe they pitched it at that so that the range has become less of an issue. That said, I've had it for a month now and I've used it more than most test bikes. Slightly out of curiosity, slightly out of how easy it is to jump on and ride and slightly out of the fact that I just find it damn good fun. So yeah, it does have a, a justifiable place in it in anyone's garage, petrol head or not. So I just want to finish up with a little thing that's been running through my head. I'm going to say that's the first proper mainstream electric bike from a big motorcycle manufacturer. There, there are tons of electric bikes out there really good ones too but from as a motorcyclist from manufacturers you know and you've dealt with and bought bikes off for millions of years that harley live wire is the first one of those big ones that they've said don't buy the petrol version buy this electric one instead so i'm going to call that the starting point for mainstream motorcyclists looking at electric power effectively for electric bikes that's like yamaha's rd250 lc it's like an old 70s or 80s two-stroke and it's brilliant, but brain can't help but wonder what's it gonna be like when we get the electric equivalent of a Panigale? It's gonna be brilliant. <laughs>